My name is uh, Anneli Idman. Uh, I have a small uh, one-man business here in uh, Kristianstad. I uh, operate a vegan food truck and uh, I serve uh, lunches in uh, different locations in Kristianstad on weekdays and in uh, evenings and uh, on uh, weekends. <laughs> I do caterings and uh, various events like uh, Sweden Rock or Malmö Festivalen and so on. On the menu I have uh, vegan burgers and I make them with uh, uh, organically grown pulses from uh, Fagraslet farm here in uh, Kripanstad. And I also do uh, vegan soups and casseroles with the pulses and uh, vegan cakes. So, Anneli, please share your screen and unmute yourself. Yes, hello. I'll try to share my screen. Uh, PowerPoint and share. So, can you hear me and see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. So, uh, that was a nice, nice film. Uh, fierce like the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> I'm Anneli Idman and I'm here today to talk about uh, how and why I started my food truck business uh, using pulses. No? Uh, let's do like this. In uh, 2014 I began to think about starting a small business of my own. Previously, I had worked as a nurse for more than 20 years. And uh, after that, I had tried the gardening business, uh, focusing on the edible one can grow in the garden. I live in an area where a large part of uh, Sweden's food is grown and produced. But in the restaurant se selection, I missed the locally grown and uh, above all vegan alter alternatives. So uh, therefore, I began thinking about how I could contribute with uh, plant-based and uh, locally grown food in my hometown. I had no experience of the restaurant business, so to open a restaurant of my own was out of the question. Uh, but I had read about the food truck business in the States and in some cities in Europe, and I thought that it seemed like a good idea to be mobile and in that way seek up my customers instead of waiting for them to come to me. I wanted to show people that it is possible to use plant-based food in an easy way. The biggest obstacle in vegan food is protein. Obviously, if you want to avoid meat. Uh, vegetable, vegetables are loaded with uh, carbohydrates, minerals and vitamins, but it is a bit tricky to include protein if you're not used to vegan cookery. To find uh, plant-based protein, you have to turn to the pulses, and I know that is uh, that this area is an obstacle for many people in Sweden. I myself had a limited experience of pulses, mostly negative ones from uh, the pea soup served in school and brown beans in sauce. And it seemed to be such a hard work and labor to cook beans, washing, soaking and cooking for hours. Nowadays though you can buy pre-cooked beans in cans at the, at the grocery store just open up the, the and pour in the soup, salad or whatever, very easy and laboring saving. The problem for me was that I wanted to use locally produced raw materials as far as possible. The proteins are after all a big deal in your everyday food, so that is the main issue and ingredient. Luckily though, I one day found Per Mordik, uh, you have heard him here before today. Uh, at a farmer's market I met him uh, selling small packages of locally organically grown beans and uh, bang my uh, business plan was perfect. I was about to, to um, 
to um, uh, use locally produced uh, beans for vegan burgers. Per and I live not far from each other in the same area, so my raw materi material is, is very local. Now I only needed to work out the perfect receipt for these smashing burgers. Uh, six months later, my family was totally fed up on my burger mistakes. In the beginning, all mushy, no texture or taste, and falling apart at the first bite. But at the end, um, I was quite pleased with my receipt. Uh, during my experimenting with the burgers, I contacted Krenova, uh, the incubating and science park here in Kristianstad. They have a startup center for people who want to start a business. They helped me on how to make a business plan. And uh, I worked on the plan for a while before having the nerve to go to the bank and ask for money. After all, I needed cash to buy a food truck. I was so nervous when I went to the bank with my business plan. To tell the truth, I am hopeless with figures and numbers. I shouldn't even have a business, but um, well. The bank though um, is not bad with numbers. My first visit to the bank went accordingly. They only saw the flaws of my business plan and I had to go home empty-handed. Empty but I am stubborn, uh, so I went to the next bank after doing some more cal calculations. It did not go well. Third bank, they almost laughed at my plan to only serve vegan food. That is not doable, they said. People want meat. You can't build a business on only vegan food. So to satisfy the bank, I agreed to serve some kind of meat, but of course, I had no intention at all to do so. Uh, I was convinced that people would love a vegan option in the fast food market. So um, that was a small lie to the bank to get my money. <laughs> uh, finally, I got my money, uh, but I had to change the business name to Gaston and Vega instead of uh, the Vega truck. And uh, Gaston, by the way, is my Cute dog. As soon as I got my money, I confirmed my order for the food truck that I had chosen beforehand. And uh, after a couple of weeks, me and my son, who just had received his driver's license, fly up to the north of Sweden to get the truck. I had, for economical reasons, chosen a company that rebuilds used German mail vans instead of buying a new one. It was half the price. We drove home the truck, uh, which took two days. And a long story of preparing everything in the truck started. Painting uh, the outside and fixing every everything inside. I also did a two day course in food safety, safety as um, I do not have an education as a chef. I wanted to be sure not to uh, do any mistakes, like food poisoning. In the beginning, I thought that I could produce all my burgers in the small kitchen in the truck. Immediately though, I realized that it was impossible due to lack of, of uh, space. I um, sent out inquiries to all restaurants in my hometown and asked for a collaboration where I used their kitchen during close down. Finally, I got a positive answer and uh, during the first year I produced my burgers on evenings and nights when the restaurant was closed. It was a tough job though because I had to transport all of my equipment and groceries back and forth. Finally, by coincidence, I found a production kitchen that was out for rent, perfectly situated. So I was very lucky. I have now hired the kitchen for three years and it absolutely saved my growing business. I have a lot of space for my everyday production, but also to hold classes in vegetarian cooking 
And um, I also have a store part where customers can pick up pre-order goods. I have invested in a lot of equipment, for example, fridges, ovens, a machine that helps me make hamburger patties. The first years I made everything by hand, uh, but when you have a batter of beans, quinoa and other ingredients for 400 burgers, it takes too long to form each burger by hand. It is both a question of my health, I'm not getting any younger, Unfortunately, unfortunately, and my hands are doing a lot of chopping vegetables, kneading bread dough, etc. So to, uh, above that form, a lot of burger patties was almost ruining my, ruining my joints. Uh, the portioning of burger batter by the machine is superb. It also is a question of food hygiene. If it takes too long to form the burger patties, the batter will be ruined because of the risk of bacterial growth. A third point of view is working hours. I just recently have begun thinking about how to minimize my working hours. For now, I am doing way too many hours for the salary I pick up, and I also need to think about my family who do not see much of me. I know that is how it is in small businesses, but after five years, I um, think I need to reconsider how to deal with the hours, either by the help of technology or by hiring staff or both. Uh, to have a kitchen and food service in a mobile, mobile unit has its pros and cons. Uh, one must always think about anchoring loose details like a casserole or you are going to have unfortunate accidents in the kitchen of which I have had a lot. <laughs> Winter time means uh, snow time and you better prepare to shovel snow so that the customers can reach the serving hatch and when it is cold outside it is freezing inside because you, you're not moving a lot. Summertime when it is hot outside you have a sauna inside but most of the time it's just fun. It's great to be able to drive around and meet customers in so many different places and occasions. So what did it result in? I now have a small business which I support myself by, not getting rich though yet. I do lunches on weekdays on uh, different locations uh, according to a set schedule. On uh, evenings and weekends I do caterings for birthday parties, weddings, business events, etc. And um, in the summer I pause the lunches to, do, to concentrate on big festivals and events. For example, Sweden Rock, different city, city festivals, sporting events, garden markets, beer festivals, you name it. Every weekend and most weekdays are occupied in the summer season. On the menu, I mainly have different varieties of the vegan burger, uh, but, I, but also mainly during lunches, I have a soup or casserole of the week with home baked bread. And in addition, I offer vegan cakes and ice cream. Uh, and I do everything myself except for the burger bread. A local bakery makes it now because I don't have the time to do it. And uh, the ice cream, also a local chocolate bakery makes for me. In addition to my servings, I offer burger patties that are chilled and vacuum packed. Uh, the customer can thus buy to cook at home with their own favorite accessoires, or they can buy the dressings from me as well. I also sell to some restaurants who put the burgers on their menu. And recently I have also started a collaboration with art students who dye fabrics with the water from soaked beans. So instead of pouring the purple, lovely water from soaked beans down the drain, it now comes to use. So was it an expected outcome? Well, if I had been younger or had more time, 
then I definitely would have done some restaurant training before starting anything in food business. As it became now, I got to learn a lot of things by trial and error, which was time consuming. And um, as it became, uh, yes. <laughs> and I, now I still lack a lot of knowledge in how to do things efficiently as I'm not from the restaurant business. Uh, also, in the beginning, I should have hired some staff for help in the daily work. All my working hours were spent on preparing food, serving, doing dishes, cleaning, doing paperwork, etc. I really did not, did not have time to do any planning, planning or thinking about uh, development, and that is my is issue right now too. So I have to go forward <laughs> and hire staff. Yes, that was the, the previous slide. <laughs> Obstacles and shortcomings. The greatest problem has been getting permission from the municipality, communal, to sell food in a public place, for example, in the town square. It took uh, one and a half years of meetings, correspondence, uh, phone calls, etc., before I got my first permission um, for a public place. And uh, during that time, I sold food from privately owned places, uh, not always situated in the city center where people are moving. And therefore, it was difficult to find customers in the beginning. So concluding, my recommendations to others are, if you have an idea that you believe in, and uh, you know you are stubborn, so just go for it. It is impossible to have a grip of all the obstacles ahead and to take measures. If I had known of all the problems, then I never would have had the nerve to start the business. But now I am happy that I did go for my dream and uh, to have a business of my own. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Anneli. Uh, can you please stop sharing the screen? Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, any questions for um, Anneli? I can see there is a question in the chat mm -hmm. from Anna. Uh, thank you for a super interesting presentation, Ali. What do you use as a binder in the burgers? We started with phacillium seeds, but have switched to camellia seeds because we only want to use local ingredients. So what do you use as a binder, Anneli? I have, uh, um, oh, let's see in English, uh, phacillium seeds. I have uh, uh, rice flour. And, um, oh, what's the third in English? Um, Are you I'm a bit blocked, blocked right now. Uh, I, I, um, it took me, it took me a, a long time to, to figure out because in the beginning I used egg. So they were just uh, vegetarian. Uh, so actually I started by doing vegetarian burgers. Um, but it was a, a bit messy to have uh, special burgers for the vegans, even though they were not many. So I, I started to, to uh, try out uh, different vegan options to, to um, uh, quit the egg. And uh, finally, I, I, I got to, to, to good results. And uh, now I think the, the burgers hold together better than they did when I used egg. So it is uh, uh, the phyllium seed and the rice uh, flour and uh, the third that I can't uh, get to my mind right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what is it in Swedish? Uh, <laughs> as I'm, I'm, um, I'm thinking about it. Okay. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there are some more questions here uh, from Oasa. Why did you choose black beans in your burgers? Did you also try other types of beans? Yes, 
uh, I tried um, uh, brown beans and uh, white beans. Uh, uh, I, uh, black beans I prefer because um, they, they are not as sweet as uh, the other beans, in my opinion. So that was the main reason. Okay, thanks. Any more questions for Anneli? No, uh, I, I have one question. Uh, you talked about Knova and that is kind of an incubator. Yes. And we heard Pia earlier. She wasn't that impressed by the incubator, but, but what about you? Did you get the support you needed? Were you satisfied? Before, before I started, uh, before I opened up, um, they were... Um, uh, I went there uh, uh, quite a few times to, to argue uh, pros and cons um, with the, the business plan and uh, that was good. Uh, after I started the business, I got an offer to have a, a mentor who would help me uh, the first six months. Uh, that didn't work out so well because uh, for the first year I was so occupied with everything. Everything was chaos, <laughs> uh, to speak the truth. So I didn't have time to, to listen to the mentor. So it would have done more use um, to have the man mentor after a year when I had settled down in the business, business a bit at least. Uh, so it, it, it was good to, to have um, arguments with them, uh, but the mentor issue was, um, uh, well, I would have preferred it after a year when I had a grip of my own business. Okay. Thank you then. Uh, if we don't have any more questions for Anne we have to move on in the program for the last uh, talk here. And that is from Kalmar Erlands Trägodsprodukter. And Håkan, you're ready? Yes. So please, Gun, can you start uh, 